Hey, it's Les from Comfortable Shoes Studio. Welcome to another episode of Art Making. In this episode, I'm going to be making some backgrounds with really good watercolors and really cheap <laughs> travel watercolor brushes from Timu. So I am also pulling out one of my nice Escoda brushes, which is a travel brush. This is a fat number 12, and I'm showing it next to the number 12 that came in the cheap travel brush set. The cheap travel brush, brush set comes in a little uh, vinyl travel case. Um, and for the watercolors, I pulled out all of my old travel tins that I made. So here you can see a bunch of them. Um, they've got a bunch of different colors in them and I just rehydrated them and started using them for these backgrounds. I wanted to clean them up a little bit. My taste in colors has changed. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to talk about is the 100 Heads Challenge, and I am setting up some backgrounds for the 100 Heads Challenge. Um, so I am making a generic face shape um, with the watercolors. It's loose, it's flowy, and then I'm doing a darker background to kind of set the blobs that I've created for the face shape out. Um, so in this case, I used pink and indigo. The face of so the pink is the general shape of the head. And then I made indigo blobs for the uh, around the eye sockets, under the chin, um, under the nose, and for the cheekbones to just kind of give some definition to where um, the various face parts would be. And that's just to give a loose kind of thing that I can draw on top of with pen and ink. And, um, you know, again, dipping back into the uh, pink again, I do like this shade of pink. Pink. It is, I believe, a quin quinindachrone. I can never pronounce that part properly. Um, and the indigo. It's one of my favorite color combinations. It's, it's great for fleshy tones, shadows uh, in landscapes. Uh, the pink is just a great tone. And then I'm using red oxide. Um, which is a rusty red color, which is a great shade to use with the pink and the indigo for skin tones, for, for darker skin tones. Um, it's a nice warm shade. Um, if you don't want someone to look pink, uh, red oxide is a great color. And I'm just blending it with some indigo to um, darken around that face shape. And... Uh, it, now I'm switching over to yellow. So basically the idea behind these face blobs that I'm creating is I use a lighter color um, to create the head, shape of the head. And then um, I use a darker color, a cooler, darker color for the shadow areas in the head. Um, and then a little, I believe that's burnt sienna for the background on this one. I do like some of my earth tones, burnt sienna and indigo blend together to make a really nice deep dark gray. Um, it's great in faces and landscapes. I'm hitting it with the heat gun to dry it out a little bit, blending some super wet areas. Um, and I have to say these cheap travel brushes actually work quite well. They're quite springy. They do a good job pulling the paint out of the palettes that I'm using, uh, which have quite deep wells. Um, and I decided to break it up and just do some stripes that I will definitely draw heads on top of. So I am doing the 100 head challenge. Um, and I decided to do it my way. I'm not doing it in 10 days. I've already been working on it much longer than 10 days, I believe. Um, but I just really wanted um, to kind of do this challenge, put together a video of all the little drawings that I'm doing and break up the challenge with the little watercolor blobs, because uh, I think it's a fun way to do a portrait. Um, you know, it leaves a lot to chance and it, you kind of have to match the face up with the blob that you're using. Um, and it just, it really does work well for a quick portrait studies and faces. Um, you can put a blob of just straight color down, but I really like how, what happens when I add um, the additional shadow areas. Like 
it, the, they're defined enough that my camera on my cell phone actually picks up and thinks of them as faces. All right, so this is a nine head page and I'm using yellow and pink as the base. So I'm just putting down some oval shaped blobs of yellow and pink. Then I get that red oxide out and I put layer it on way too heavy. So I use the red oxide in the yellows. And you see I'm putting a stripe for the eye areas and a little stripe for the nose areas. Uh, the yellow oxide is great for, for this with the yellow to kind of give you, it's not really a good fleshy tone um, with the yellow, but it, it looks great in these drawings. And then I'm using indigo around the what would be the chin and the cheek. So I'm putting some shadow in around that. Um, I'm using some green on the yellows to add that shadow area. Going back to the indigo um, to sh add in um, little shadows for the eyes. And then I'm using indigo to paint out the background. So I do like having the background painted with color. Um, in the final drawings, it doesn't really help the drawings pop all that much, but I do like having the background color. Um, this paper is not great for watercolors. It is wrinkling really bad. You can see that it's puffing up. Um, yeah, this sketchbook, as much as I'm loving the $5, five below sketchbooks, um, this has been a struggle um, for a couple, couple of reasons. Um, because this is my everything everywhere sketchbook, I'm typically working on both sides of the page. Uh, and then the wrinkles make it really difficult to write or draw on that wrinkly side of the page. I'm doing my thing with watercolors, which uh, I'll probably get comments. That's not, uh, that's not how you use watercolors. Uh, it's how I use watercolors. Um, I do love the blobs and runs that I get when I use watercolors, technically incorrectly. Uh, I think it's it's fun and I like it when it runs. Um, and then this is, um, again, I'm going in with the pink. I think I'm doing a three head page here. So I'm doing pink and yellow this time. Um, I'm putting the yellow in as a highlight on one side. I'm doing a yellow head here in the middle and uh, adding in some pink areas, their eyes, uh, shadow of the nose, the cheeks and lips. Um, I'm starting with the blue for the faces and then I'm adding in pink for the cheeks, eye area and mouth and then I'm layering around it yellow. Uh, I do typically now just do a blob um, I do that more often than I, I do the uh, style that I'm showing in this video. Um, and then there's another super tiny um, kit, uh, travel watercolor kit that I made. And uh, that uses a old pill pack um, cut up to hold the watercolors. Um, don't use hot glue to hold those in to your tins because uh, it melted them. So don't do that learn from my mistakes. Uh, and then I'm hitting it with some indigo. Um, that was sort of my little bright mini palette. I, I love that color for sky shades. Um, and it mixes really well to make a green. Uh, and again, I'm letting those watercolors run, even though it's not the right thing. Hit, hit it with the heat gun. Um, and those are the pages that I created. Um, I've been drawing on them. If you are interested in seeing uh, pictures of some of these pages completed with pen and ink on top, head over to my Instagram. I'm original LC Harper over on Instagram. All right. And now um, the rest of the video is basically me ironing the pages so they're a little more smooth. Um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. If you uh, enjoy this kind of content, uh, hit that thumbs up. Uh, also subscribe. And if you really enjoy this content, head over to my coffee page or Kofi page um, and uh, buy me a coffee. It lets me make more videos like this. And I really appreciate all the support that I get over on coffee or Kofi. Kofi, I know it's Kofi. Why do I, why am I bugging about that? Thanks everyone. Bye.